Hi, I'm Charlie Collins, and this is the Donegal Sport Hub Donegal Daily Championship Podcast. Brought to you in association with Kelly Centra, multi award winning store, mountain top letter Kenny, providing 24 hour service, seven days a week. Well, good afternoon, everyone. You're very welcome here. We're at Full Tilt Studios here at the Mountain Top, and it's Donegal Sport Hub, Donegal Diddy's. Look ahead to the Michael Murphy Sports and Leisure Championships, which get underway next weekend. Much anticipated, of course. Everybody loves the championship, and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by my colleague, Chris McNulty, by our regular pundit here, Francie Freel, and also delighted to say that we're joined by the man who's the most successful uh, senior championship player in the county, John Harn. Guys, good afternoon. You're all welcome. Thanks, Charlie. Good to have you on board. Just we're going to very briefly look back at the league situation because the league's finished at the weekend and see does anybody think there was any major surprises. Fantastic performance by Kilcar going through in Division 1. McCools and Milford relegated. Division 2, Ardra, the winners there. Killy Beggs beaten Terman at the weekend to clinch the uh, second promotion spot. Big surprise with four masters being relegated, perhaps, along with Boncrana. Then in Division 3, it went right to the wire there as well. Downing's taking the victory to take the league title. Convoy on score difference ahead of Malin, taking the second promotion spot. Narossa relegated. And Neve Ulton also relegated on the head-to-head against Neve Column Kill. And in Division 4, letter Kenny Gales, the winners, and Maville finishing in second spot. John, anything jump out at you there has been as expected or a big surprise? Uh, not not nothing overly charity I suppose Milford maybe getting relegated I've you know watching them against St. Junior's this last couple of years and played against them a couple of times they're a decent side I thought they might have hung in there in Division 1 but you know they've gone down now I know they put a big effort to get up there probably a big result for me Charlie you know was Convoy getting promoted yeah. and Downings for that matter wasn't it you know two smallish clubs Convoy you know wouldn't have a, the big history of you know Downings Back in the 80s, there were great Gaeltuck teams and teams that got to senior semi finals and that. But for Convoy to get promoted to Division 2, I think it's great yeah. for them and fair play to them and fair play to Downings, you know. Absolutely. Convoy and Downings made a late run at it, really, Francie, didn't they? They just came right at the right time. I think Downings might have won their last three or four matches in Convoy, likewise. Yeah, Burt were kind of running away with that league, you know. There was, um, I think, five or six weeks ago, Burt needed to win one game to mm, win the league, yeah. yeah. you know, and it just all changed, you know, a bit of momentum and Downings got the momentum and. Listen, hey, you know, it's great now for them coming into the championship and um, they're playing intermediate championship and it's great momentum for them now to win the league and listen, Convoy, you know, what a story for Convoy, you know, uh, mm-hmm. winning and score difference, get up, you know, it's brilliant and uh, they're in Division 2 now and listen, one thing about them anyway, you, they'll, they'll, they'll come with a Lawrence McMullins in charge of them and I've worked with Lawrence, he's been involved in the under 20, one from Maxie and myself and um, he's been a big effort in there and, and they reap the rewards now. Yeah. And sorry, Charlie, Go like, ahead, John. Convoy got promoted last year, am I right in saying that? So yeah, they've come from four to three yeah. and yeah. Yeah. So to it's not easy. Hard to do. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. Chris, I'll, I'll come to the relegation with you because Neve Colm Kill got out of it by the skin of their teeth. I suppose the other surprise maybe for everybody, four masters being relegated to Division 3. I mean, that's a big surprise. Yeah, I think it's it's a big blow for both themselves and Bunkran. I mean, two big clubs, two big towns to begin down into Division 3. It, you know, we could say it really shouldn't happen, but I suppose that's maybe not looking at, at, at why it's happened. You know, I suppose we looked at the start of this year, maybe we'll, we'll touch on the junior championship. A lot of us would have said, Bunkrana, you know, we'd, we'd have picked them as big favourites to win the junior championship after getting relegated last year. But it hasn't been a great year for them, but they did come late with a couple of decent results. Yeah. Ryan Bradley's come back come back into their squad and stuff in the last couple of weeks as well. So remains to be seen there. But I think, Charlie, for me, in, ge- in a general sense, was the leagues were very competitive, top and bottom, mm. overall. Mm. Um Kilkiar winning six, what was it, winning 16, drawing one out of their games yeah. without such a vast array of county men, you know, and you look at what Gidor done last year and they put it down to a great league run. A few teams like that will be going into championship, Ardra will get a wild kick out of going back into Division 1 after a few years of an absence. And the same then with those teams, the likes of Downings and Convoy, begin into their respective championships, really, really brimming with confidence. Yeah. Terry, something I've noticed this last few years with club up on Donegal and you know, played a long time and it like when we used to start off playing there was games called off left, right and centre right. and you you just never knew. Like you take it that maybe this last six, seven years, clubs have really copped on into Nigal yeah. and you have to give them credit and they're playing their matches when they're supposed to be and no one's crying about you hear a wee bit of crying but very, very little. Yeah. Clubs are getting on, they're playing their matches and it's that's why the Nigal Club football's 
Is it? I've, I've got so much better. Like, and the yeah. county teams and the minor teams. And, you know, yeah, everyone Frank, is Frankie had already made that point down during the presentation. He called Karen Mulford there last week. He thanked the clubs for the efforts. Yeah. And I know we criticise the CCC and all that sort of stuff. But Francie, in fairness, I mean, you're involved at club level with the team. Getting games each week is what it's all about, really, isn't it? Well, at least now you know where you stand. Like, you know the system, the, fi- the fixtures are put out now. And if a game's called off, there's a free there's a free uh, free date every month, and you play your backlog game that date. Yeah. So if you get a if you get a run and you play your three games in the month, you're free a weekend, and everybody knows that. And if you're not, you have to play that weekend, and that's great to know to what what what's happening every week. And a club player, I think that now they're getting the respect they deserve, you know, because yeah. before it was listen, there was you're looking about forty players or forty five players, but what about the rest of the, the yeah. you know the players? And uh, I think now they've been looked about, and I listen, the leagues were reaping that. That's why I think they're so competitive because everybody's just playing now. Yeah, you know? we we'll just mentioned the other teams. That won their divisions John Ardra big club Ardra great tradition there good championship and they're in a tough group but the little rattle great to see them coming up and they did it in style ah they did uh, as you say Tenny great club I think they might have beat us in a league final maybe seven years ago and they must have maybe went down the year yeah. after so big tradition in Ardra and a great club and do a lot of work there on the raids and they run all them tournaments and you know fantastic club and they want to be back at the top table and that's where they are now. And you got to give them credit because, you know, they were struggling there for a couple of years. We played them in the championship, you know, and, and they, were, they, they weren't great, but they've stuck at it. And, you know, we Peter's up there with the Masters, Peter McEwen, you look at Brendan Boyle and Kenneth Doherty and them older players have yeah. stuck at it and you've got to give them a lot of credit. And that's what it's all about, Jerry. And they've brought the young players through and they've got some good lads coming through and, and fair play to them. Absolutely. And Chris Letter, Kenny Gales won in Division 4, club putting in a big effort as well, Mavell going up with them. Uh, you know, good to see that. Yeah, it is. I suppose Letterkenny Gales would have been very disappointed to go back down into Division 4 because a number of years ago they, they felt they put such work and they're getting out of it and they would have felt the trajectory was upward at that point but they sort of fell awry and went back down again so I suppose fair play to them for finding themselves again and getting back out of it as quick as they could be. But, you know, you look at Ardra, they went down and it's, it's taken them a long, long time. You look at McCool's there this year, played in Division 1 for the first time in something like maybe 14, 15 years. You know, yeah. it, it can take clubs a lot of time because the blow of relegation can be really, really hard to, to overcome. And just back on, on John's point, John, you just played, I think, that final against Ardra maybe early December. Yeah. It's great to see fo- the football being yeah. played and the league's all finished and wrapped up now before we get into the championship and football played in the months and weeks of the year that it should be. Perfectly, yeah. Good cue then to move on to the Michael Murphy Sports and Leisure <coughs> Championships. Um, we're going to look at the groups here. I'm going to leave Group A because obviously that's the one that attracts the most attention since the draw was made. I'm going to start in Group B. And uh, John, Neve Connell, um, just looking at the championship over the last 10 years, they've been there, thereabouts. They've won a couple of times. They've lost a, lot of, lost a couple of finals as well well. Interestingly, Killy Beggs have been in two finals in the last 10 years. McCool's have had a difficult season. Dunlow have had a mixed sort of a season as well. Neef Connell, obvious favourites there. Yeah, obvious favourites, Charlie. A, a team with a lot of pedigree and a lot of experience, as you said, been in them finals, won a few, lost a few, and, you know, they were beaten, they're beaten in the last two finals, Charlie. Yeah, yeah. You know, right. but what I would have said before about the last two finals, yeah, they didn't score enough. You know, four points against Kilcar two years ago, one seven with the goal coming on injury time last year against Gidor. It just was never enough to win a final. So, as I said at the start of the year, I think for Neve Collin to push on, they had to play a more expansive game. You know, try. I and was get going to say to you, John, is it their own fault they didn't try to score enough in those so. matches? But probably, Charlie. But going back a couple of years ago, you know, the Jim McGinnis influence was still in a lot of clubs and a lot of teams mm. were playing with a blanket defence. You know, that Kilcar. Gantt's final was seven four, so it was still very much, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know. But yeah. that has, seems to have gone this last twelve months, especially. Mm. Look at Kidor last year, seventeen points to one seven. You know, yeah. so they pushed on. So I think Neve Connor were maybe a wee bit too cagey, but you know, a lot, most teams now, you don't see that mass defence anymore. I think players have got fed up of it, fans have got fed up, of, fed up of it. So, you know, players want to go out now and express themselves. So Neve Connor definitely have the players. You know, whether they're good enough to, you know, to topple a big team like Kilcar or Guido later on in the championship I don't know but definitely ch- Cherry their hot favourites come out of that yeah. group and who with them? well probably going on form you see Kelly Bates have got the have got the uh, wind in their sails now pardon the pun for the fishermen but you know uh, <laughs> they're you know they're, they've got promoted there you know they've been determined by a point at the weekend but they've got promoted McCool's are, are on a real downer after getting relegated yeah. haven't had a great season don't know we're always sticky in Division 2 you know on their day they can, they can be uh they can be difficult, but if you look at the fixtures, Charlie, we're looking at the area. Kelly Bays have McCool's and on low at home, so I would fancy Kelly Bays to get their four points there. 
and I think that'll be enough for mm-hmm. them to come second in that group. Francie? I just think in championship, your two home games, the home team, you know, while emphasis, I think it's a big it's a big uh, marker and most teams the big the top teams especially play at home. And that's where you get your points, you know. Um As John says there, you have Killy Beggs who have McCools and Dunlow coming. We're presuming that those three clubs are going to be fighting for second spot. Francie, maybe that's not the way it'll work out, that Neve Connell will win it. So having those two home games is really key for Kelly Beggs. Oh, definitely. And I think it's Neve Connell they've up first in the first game. So then uh, probably get that out of the way and then probably get ready for McCools and Dunlow then. But like, and the Kelly Beggs are probably, as John was saying there, you know, that one at the weekend, definitely. Um, and Paul McGinley's back playing on. He's back from America. Yeah. Plus... Uh, Brendan Flaherty I think his name he uh, played from back in the day as well so I think he's back playing them as well so they've recruited them two boys back plus what they've got them young boys I know Owen Band's a big loss for them mm. um, and just back in John's point about Neve Connell I think Neve Connell it's, it's um, to me it's the last chance saloon for, for them for some of them guys um, you know um, two finals that got beat on and as John said and I think we alluded to last year they weren't scoring enough no. and they need to get you know and they do have the forward players to get the scores and I think Neve Connell and Kelly Beggs will come out of that group, you know. Yeah. Chris, on the Neve Connell one, if you look at the squad they have, they probably have the biggest and maybe the best squad in terms of numbers in, in the county available to them. Getting their top 15 might be a problem for, for Martin Regan and he's got this mixture of very experienced players and, and very young players with a couple of in-betweeners, we'll call them. Are they good enough to come out of that section? But more importantly, are they good enough to push on this year from there and get to another final and this time won it? Well, they're definitely good enough to come out of the section. I think, it, it, you know, you look at it, it would be probably for them a travesty if they didn't top that group. They've just got to come out of it. They've got to win their three games. Come out clean with no injuries. They have have to be coming with a lot of hurt from the last two years because it wasn't even that they left the last two finals behind them. They didn't do enough to win them. It's not that they were kicking a load of wides and they were thinking, geez, we'd kick them scores and yeah, all that. Yeah. They just simply didn't do enough to win it. And... With the panel of players they have, to me it was kind of unforgivable they did it once. But then to go back and make the same mistake again the second year around, you know, they're bound to be even hurt, regret and all that coming into the boil. And I know I spoke to Martin Regan the first week of the league this year and he did suggest that they wanted to be more expansive and they were, you know, admitting Mm -hmm. their mistakes of last year. They're definitely, definitely good enough, but they have to get that mix right and they just have to score more. Yeah. John, we'll move on now to uh, Section C. Interesting one, this. Glen Finn, Glen Swally, Four Masters and Milford. You have two teams that have been relegated, Four Masters and Milford, from their respective divisions. Glen Finn were in a relegation battle right up to the end there. They got a draw against Neve Columba, then they went into the low and won. And Glen Swally, likewise, uh, we were saying the amount of scores they conceded in the league. Now, I know Glen Swally don't put much emphasis on the league, but can you can you... Drop the light switch now, just and, and uh, switch and won that section. Ah, uh, well, listen, Charlie with Glen Swally, you know, as you say, they don't put a lot of emphasis on the league. Like they won the championship from Division Two a few years ago, so they'll not be one bit worried about it. But at the same time, I don't think Glen Swally are the team that they were. I just think you know they're Neil and Kean Boner and their players are getting a wee bit older. Coppers out injured, you know what I mean. They'll still be depending on Michael Murphy big time, but I don't know if he has the support around him. Definitely think Lance Willie Charlie will probably top that group and saying that there. You would have to say it's a, it's a weak enough group, you know. Yeah. You've got four masters who've got relegated to Division 3, Milford have got relegated to Division 2, mm-hmm. and Glen Finn. But Charlie, you would say then that it's, it's probably going to be exciting for, for this for the runners up spot in that, you know. Mm-hmm. So, them mm-hmm. teams, them three teams have something to play for Glen Finn, Milford, and four masters to come second and try and make a, a quarter final, you know. Uh, out of them, it's, it's, it's hard to know. Because their 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 form isn't great. Any of them teams, I think maybe there could be a kick in Milford yet. Yeah, you know what I mean. I think yeah. they're not a bad team when they have everyone when they have everyone there. So you know, I think Milford have a have a, a realistic chance. They've Glen Finn at home first. You know, that's a big game for them. If they can beat them there, then forget about. No, they're they're, they're away to four masters first, John. Oh, sorry, uh, they're away to four oh, masters, masters first. Yeah, first, yeah. Sorry. yeah. So that's a big game for them. You know, four yeah. masters have gone down to division three. They can't going in with any confidence and I think mm. if Mulford can get their best 15 on the pitch you know they could they could get yeah. the runners up spot there those matches between those three clubs are going to be so vital Glen Swally have two home games Francie even Glen Finn did beat them in the first game uh, they've got four masters and they've got Milford at home then 
you can't see either of those two teams beating Glen Swally out there, can you? No, but listen, we said last year Glen Swally played Ardra and Ardra went and beat them down that's in Ardra. Right, that's right. So listen, anything's possible. Glen Swally lost that lost that game and they got to the semi final. But no, I just think I think Glen Swally will definitely top the group there. And I think the, the other three teams are definitely fighting, and they probably know that themselves. Um, they're fighting for that second spot. Um, I have a funny feeling for Glen Fun. Um, I think uh, the weather kind of suits them. They're a dogged team. They're coming with tradition here. They won the intermediate last year. Yeah. Um, they won the intermediate by just, just dogging it out by every other team. And I just think them and Mulford, down in Mulford, I think whoever wins that game will top the group. And I just have a well funny feeling for Glen Fun. I think Frank's back. He organises them. He'll... Uh, He'll, he'll know it probably, you know, it's a big chance to get to that quarter final and well that well, you know on the group. And I think I think Glenn Finn will beat them. Yeah. I was up at Glen Finn's recently against Neve Columba. Now Neve Columba scored one four in the last uh, ten minutes to get a draw in that game, Chris. But Glenn Finn, I was impressed with Glenn Finn and as Francis says, Frank's back organising stuff and that. They've a lot of good young lads, they've a lot of pace in the team as well. But it's a big opening game for them at home to Glen Sully because if they lose that, they're on the back foot then. They've got to go to Milford, which is not easy, and then they've a home game against Four Masters, which they'll expect to win. Could it come down, as Francis said, to that Glen Finn Milford game? It definitely could. And Glen Finn, I suppose, if you look back in their their history recent and even going back, they never know when they're beat Glen Finn. You know, you can never seem to put them down far enough that they'll go away. They keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. If that sort of thing built into them over the years. To me, it you know would it be a wild shock if, if Glen Finn could could rattle Glen Swally on so, Sunday? To me, like John, there's there's questions over have Glen Swally enough? You know, we all know they're big players and that three or four men that they have. Copper's a huge, huge loss. Have yeah. they enough around the likes of Murphy to give the championship a real kick? We're expecting them to come out of the group, yeah. But those other three teams are going to see this as a massive chance. You, mm. you know, if you're drawn in a group of death with three big teams, you're thinking right. Championships gone for us here, but these three, when that draw was made, they're thinking there's a huge, huge chance of a quarter final. Yeah. Even for masters who haven't had a well good league, they've been relegated. But if they can kind of refocus themselves, you know, and 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 get it together, all three of them will think that there's a quarter final place there. Back to Milford, if if I was Danny O'Donnell this week, and I don't know if it would be even worth making the call, but I'd be trying it anyway, is to try and get Tony McNamee on board for the championship because he's been a huge loss to them yeah. in the league. He's a huge part of it, that ability to get a goal. He's always clap a few scores for you. And we're missing out some of them games by you know a few points that he could have made the difference. And to me, it could be, it could be the difference in yeah. getting into the quarterfinals and not. Francie, will Neil Gallagher be the difference as John has suggested to Glenn Soley? He hasn't played much. Uh, he played in one game there for three quarters of it. I think we were both at that game, weren't we? Yeah. Um, and obviously not lacking match fitness. But if, they, if they're careful with him as Glenn Soley tend to be, uh, will he be a huge influence on them? Oh, definitely. You know, um, Big Neil. And listen, Big Neil's playing and, and Murphy's edge of the square. It's just route one with football and, and but no better man than big deal I guess John said alluded to there too I think Copper's a wild loss nobody on the yeah. estimate said he's a very good club player and he could be a big loss for Glen Swally and they probably won't fan out to down the lane when when they, when they get out I think they will get out of the group you know and I think down the lane that's probably where they'll miss him but back to Neil Lock listen he's a, he's a big presence and like you know with the football now and kickouts and stuff and he like he wins the ball and just kicks it straight back into Murphy. And I think that's, I think Glen Swilly will get the business done early. Maybe with the rest, big Neil maybe in maybe in the last game. That yeah. they, they know they probably beat Glen Finn and beat uh, Mulford. They'll probably be you know the hosed you know into the next round. Yeah. Right. Let's go to Group D. Uh, obvious favourites here: Kilcar unbeaten in the league. Uh, very unfortunate in the championship last year in terms of injuries. Uh, they were without Ryan McHugh and Patrick McBerty, and then Mark McHugh got injured early in that quarter final against Neve Connell. John, they've been hugely impressive, as Chris alluded to earlier on in the league campaign, uh, unbeaten, which is a difficult thing to do in, in all county league in Donegal. Malin Terman and Bundorn won't really worry them in, in this group, will they? No, definitely not, Charlie. And you say very, 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 very impressive. And you know, to go unbeaten with all their county players, Paddy McBerty and Ray McHugh and Owen McHugh, and you know, they just come on with them young players, Matthew McLean and Andrew McLean and Mickey Hegarty still there. So they're very good, Charlie. You know, it's them. Listen, them and Gidor are favourites for the championship. There's no yeah. doubt about that, and rightly so. Uh, Kilcar, I'll have no problem in that group, Charlie. Listen, they're going to top that group, no doubt about it. And no more than Group C, it's 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 the fight for second place, which is which is going to be exciting in that group. And you know, I think Terman and Bondorn will really fancy that there. Malin are probably a wee bit weak in Division Three this year. Didn't have a didn't have a great year. You can't see Malin really getting 
getting the result anyway. So, you know, this weekend between Terman and and, yeah. and, and Bundoran and the Burn Road, that's the big game of the weekend for me, Cherry. So I'll probably go out to that there and see how they go. Of spirits will fly. I'll come back to France in a moment. Chris, that this is boiled down to that this Sunday, second place in that in that section could be decided this weekend. Yeah, well, I suppose you'd have to say Terman and Bundoran are the sort of the next two there. So the game between them, obviously, it, you know, does, yeah. does come down to that. The fact Terman are at home the Bourne Road. But, you know, Jimmy Brennan, Paul Brennan and that Bundoran not going to be. I think they've kind of got things together in the last few weeks. They weren't going well in the early stages of the league. But I suppose no coincidence that since those boys have come back into the panel again, they've managed to, managed to kick on. It's a huge, huge game. It's probably... You know, there's there's the obvious one at Marigallan. It's probably next in line in term in terms of what it could mean down the line yeah. in, in a couple of weeks' time, and in terms of it's the actual importance of the game and, and the result of it. Yeah, you'll make Bunborn favourite for that one, Francie. I'm sure on Sunday. Oh, big team, and Maxi's involved in as well, so it yeah. adds another spice to it. Yeah, um, is, is it fair? I don't want to put you in a spot. Obviously, you're involved with chairman, but <laughs> I suppose we're we're not moving too far away from being on the button when we say this game on Sunday is a key one for both clubs oh definitely um, that's the way we were looking at it anyway you know it's, whoever wins that there is a great chance of getting to the getting to the quarter finals because um, listen rightly so Kilkear are you know the probably second or first favourites for the championship they've been you know went up serious scores in all their league games yeah. and as John said you know, without the county players and you know, they probably really bonded as a team without them county players and, and you know that'll really battle hard them now for the championship down the line um, the so interesting thing about yourselves and Bondor and Francie is both of you were in relegation trouble yeah. uh, with not long to go in terms of games and both of you have come out of it well I saw Bondor and down Gidor they were very poor now I know they were playing Gidor and they were short but they looked I didn't think they'd won another game mm. and they've come back and won a couple or maybe two or three games since that so they're just coming into form at the right time you guys likewise I remember talking to you and you said we need to win two out of three mm. and you, you did that fairly comfortably yeah well, listen um, it's been a, a different year for ourselves you know um, just with injuries and stuff and Andy McCormick picked up a suspension and missed three months for us like, and we can't be doing out a, a player of that calibre for so long and Pose upon door in their case probably they're missing Jamie Brennan with the county so yeah. you know that's probably what's going to come down to this weekend probably between you know a shootout between Enda McCormick and, and Jimmy Brennan and whoever wins that'll probably get 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 the winners you know cracking game and a prospect let's go then to the the group of death or whatever we want to call it we seem to have one every year John St Unan seem to be in the middle of it every year they haven't had the best of luck uh, they didn't come out of the group last year which was a disaster for a club like St Unan's and I'll tell you what John looking at their fixtures they're up against it this year again up against it Charlie and you know you would have to say that. With our drag getting promotion and one in Division Two, it's made it even yeah. tighter. You know, yeah. you made it at the start saying, "Well, our drag mightn't be, you know, might be an easier game," you know. But they've come now in one Division Two, so it's really four teams that are really at it. Uh, at maybe Gidor slightly ahead of the other three, but the, you could say there, that that's four Division One teams you have all in the group there. Yeah. Uh, as you say, Charlie St. Junians have always got into the, be it in the old draw when it used to. Be you know we got Glen Swally a couple of times after mm. beating them in the championship we got them I know we hit in the first round we've always got we got Kilcar in the first round big games but you know Charlie we've always won them that's what I said to the boys we've always yeah. we never yeah. went out of the out of the first round and last year was the first time we never got out of, out of the first the round group, yeah. or the group so it was very disappointing Charlie so you know there's a definitely a bit of pressure on the lads you know it's a group of death but it's a group that. You have to look to come yeah, out because they, they they go to Gidor on Sunday, which is along with that Terman Bundoran game, a huge game for the two clubs. Gidor with home advantage. They won in O'Donnell Park last week, so psychologically they're a bit ahead of St. Unans. And then they've got our draw at home, but they have to go to St. Michael's as well, which for what could be a, a deciding game in terms of second spot. So no easy games whatsoever. No, there. no easy games, Charlie. And what St. Unans have to look for this weekend as uh, as a performance. You know, they have to get stuck in. They have to bring something to the table. Not like they played against Kido last year at Nodal Park. I know it was very cagey, but it was you it was useless, Cherry. You know, there was no drive, there was no bite, it wasn't good enough yeah. for St. Junior's. The performance against Glenty's over there was you know, you were there too, Cherry. It yeah. just wasn't good enough. They were just lack luster for whatever reason. No biting them, and that's not good enough from our boys, you know, and we were faced disappointed. So Listen, Terry, I don't expect them to beat Kidor this weekend, but I would like to think that they'll get stuck in and they'll give us something to shout about yeah, and yeah. at least come away saying that, you know, they give it their all and, and, and we can see a wee bit of progression and, listen, you get ready then for the other two games against Ardra and St Michael's and, you know, hopefully we can, we have Ardra at home, you're hoping that we could, that home advantage will count there and then you go to the Brides in the last day with everything to play for and 
a ding dong battle and you know St. Unions we can always we've always managed to beat St. Michael's in some great games so you know our boys should have nothing to fear but definitely Terry the pressure's on our boys and I would like to think that they'll step up this year and try and yeah. get out of the group a positive attitude, Chris, because they didn't take a positive attitude into their matches last year. And you might as well lose with a positive attitude as lose with a very negative one. And I think that was the biggest disappointment for everybody about St. Eunice last year. Yeah, because like poor and all as they were that day against Ghidorah out in the park, Nyla Donald are free in the last minute to level the game, hit the post. They hit the post of the upright three times in the second half. Yeah. And I, don't, I think they scored maybe just one or two points, John, in that second yeah. half. One so, point, so one point. So bad and all mm. as they were, they were still only one point from Ghidor, who went on to do what they did the rest of the championship. You know, had Nile scored that point, John, who knows? You know, what did it give St. Junins that wee kick going to Glentish? You, you just don't know. For me, you look at Ghidor this year, I think it's notable the likes of Warren McNeilis, Miguel Carroll, Cian Mulligan. Having been under around the county squad, could that maybe take away that wee bit of sharpness? Because last year those boys were coming, they were absolutely flying, coming off the, the good year with the county and stuff. But are they coming this year with the same buzz? You know, they've done what they've done. Well, the I was club. at their games against Bondorn and Glen Swilly, and they, they were at it, Chris. You know, they were at it. They didn't care that the two teams were playing were weak. They were going to score as much as they could. And they looked to me, Francie, like a team or a squad of boys that were thinking, I need to show that I want to be in the 15. Boiler's on the line. He's not giving them any respite. They might have been 20 points up. He was expecting a high level. And that's why they got to where they did last year, obviously. So St. Unions are going to have to play very, very well on Sunday to, to get anything out of that game and play well in the next couple of matches to get out of it. Ah, that's the way I think it'll go too. I think you know. I think get all. I think get all top the group again. Um, um, and I think it's a really to me. It's a between St Michaels and St Unions. I think you know our draw come with def, definitely with pedigree, but I just think these three teams are playing Division One football. I think yeah. at that level, you know, they're playing consistently. St Michaels, you know, someone says they're in a bit of relegation, but I don't think they really were. Um, they had a couple of men injured and didn't get their teams out when they got back to full strength. They just went well, up. Well, they got nine points out of ten in their last five games. You know, St Michaels, and I saw them a couple of times, yeah. and actually I saw them lose to Kilcar and lose to somebody else. They lost by a point. Yeah. We were just talking, their score difference yeah. in their 18 matches was minus seven. Yeah. So it just shows you they were very close, close. to winning games that yeah. they lost type that, of thing. That, you know? That's the thing I would say about St. Michael's. They make it beat, but they're competitive. Yeah. You know, um, so listen, I suppose Mark Anthony will be back in goals too and they didn't have him from some of the league games as well and that'll be a big help for them too going forward. You know, um, you know the game's coming now and kick outs and that's where the, the St. Unions, Patton versus you know McGinley, I think it'll, it'll come down to that. Uh, who can get the kick outs off and it's going to be, that game's down on uh, the bridge too, it's a tight pitch, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, but just just back to Gidor, you know, and just think about Gidor, probably didn't put a big emphasis in the league. They didn't finish to February and everybody else started had their mm-hmm. pre-season mm-hmm. done. You know, you had to give them a bit of time off and then trying to get them back up again and I think that's maybe what happened there. You know, they probably didn't set their stall out for going the league like last year they did. And this year they probably just took it a bit easy and trying to blend it a couple of players and you know and that's the way they'll be looking at get two or three players that you know that'll come in uh, on big game and make a change and that's what they'll be looking to do yeah down the line John just on a wider point about the championship we're looking at that section there and any two out of those four would do the quarterfinals justice we're looking at teams that have been relegated from one to two and from two to three in the championship. Is that unbalanced still there? Do we need to look at that situation when the draw has been made? Some sort of a seeded thing that we don't have this because the last few years, this is a personal view of mine, I'm not sure if any agree, the quarterfinals have been spoiled a little bit by the imbalances in them. Mm -hmm. It's hard to know, Charlie. I would have been always a traditionalist and would have said, listen, the championship's the championship. If you get an easy draw, that's the luck of the draw and so be it. And we had teams like, I know Kelly Bay's got, I'm not being disrespectful, Kelly Bay's got a couple of finals, you know, they had, Hand in well, you see, Malin bet us in 2013, right, and then right. Malin, I think, were too cocky, and Kelly Bay's caught them. So, you, yeah. you can always, you know, a team can get an upset, but th- there's a lot, there's a lot to be said, Charlie, maybe for a seeded draw, but then it doesn't, it doesn't help the weaker teams, it doesn't give them much to play for. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. If you see that there's going to be two strong teams in every group, you know, but then it it maybe brings it on to the league that teams will be more competitive in the league and put more emphasis on the league if, they're, if the league placings are going to count. Yeah. If the top eight in Division 1 are going to be the top, top seeds type top of thing. Seeds, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, so you know, it has pluses and minuses, Charlie, and I think maybe, you know, I don't know, Charlie, I can't make up my mind to be honest with you. Yeah. There's not too many counties do see that, you know, a lot of counties do, 
the groups now, but I don't think there's too many that do seated seated draws yeah. for, for for it as far as I know. You know, Francie, what's your view? No, I, I pose involved myself and Terman. I, I think the way it's done at the minute, you know, it kind of gives the likes of ourselves. Like I think if we were running with bigger teams, the top eight teams, you'd find it hard to get out yeah. of the group. You look at our group there, and you'd be thinking, you know, you might have a chance of getting out of it. You see, and maybe the, the, the Mulford group there as well, where you didn't have a good year. Uh, but you know, that I think. That's the thing about it. It's like the FA Cup. I think whoever you're drawn against, you play them, mm. and uh, I think it's, it's, it just works out well. And listen, always the best team always wants it. And that's just the bottom line. Yeah. You know what I mean? Chris, are you a traditionalist, or would you like to see a change? No, I think if if you go down the road of seeding it, you're almost you're almost sort of casting the other eight clubs and saying, look, you're not really good enough to win our quarterfinals, but yeah. play the old group, and sure, them eight teams will come out, and that'll be grand. I think the way it is now, it's you know you have a group there, say Group C, as we talked about. There's three teams that think right, we can get this second spot. You've got the, the group of death and, you know, it's tough on the teams that are drawn in that, but you got to go play it and if, if you want to win a championship, you have to beat the best teams at some point anyway. So, for me, I, I would keep it keep it how it is. Okay. I'm just going to, right, we're going to get your views. Uh, John, group one, who's, uh, go back to group one, who's going to come out of it? So, is that group A? Group A, I'll yeah. go for Gidor to top it and I'll have to go for St. Junius to come second. Okay, Francie? I agree. Same here. Right, I'll go with you as well. <laughs> Right, uh, Chris, we'll start with you then for Group B. I'm going to go with Neve Connell to top it and I think Kelly Beggs to get in as number two. Francie? Same. John? Yeah, I'll agree with that. Okay, I'll go with that as well. This is so boring. Hmm. All right then, Francie? I'm going to go for Glenn Swilly and Glenn Fun. John? I'm going for Glenn Swilly and Milford. Okay. Glenn Swilly and Milford for me. And Glenn Swilly and Glenn Fun for me. Yeah. And the last one? I'm going to go for Kilcar and I think Fancy won't like to hear that. I think Bundorn will pop Terman at home at okay. this weekend. So I'm going for Kilcar and Bundorn. Chris? I'm going to go for Kilcar and Bundorn as well. Right. I'll agree. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> I'm going to go for Kilcar and Terman. Right, so I'll be the I'll be the odd man out there. We're going to write that down in reminders we go along because uh, I mentioned before we start recording we did it last year and Chris and and uh, Francie made a complete Ned's head <laughs> of their predictions and then they tried to backtrack <laughs> then John as we went to front. I remember Francie I but I said maybe you so, still invited us back exactly. Here. <laughs> so we have it on record now and I'm going to write it down as soon as we finish intermediate championship. Uh, we're going to obviously look at it. As results come in and that because it's a hard one. Francie, you were with Clahanili last year. Uh, a lot of people surprised that they didn't do better than they did. I know you were disappointed as well. They're in with Neve Breed, Neve Alton and Red Hughes. Again, you have uh, two teams there, Neve Alton and Red Hughes. Didn't have great years. Clahanili, I saw them a few times. Competitive in Division 1, I must say. Haven't seen Neve Breed. What do you think? Ah, listen, you know, pose the big one for Clahanili was to stay in Division 1 again. And, the, and they stayed in the Division 1. Probably like like last year too, the intermediate then, you know, um, just didn't didn't get up for the games. I mean, and when you're the top team, you know, one of the top teams in Division 1 and you're an intermediate, every team gets up a level to play you. Yeah. And Claude and Lee weren't able to get up to everybody else's level. This year, I think, you know, maybe a wee bit different. Um, I think maybe, the you know, the, the, they got their 12 points probably early enough or they're, they're, they were safe kind of three or four weeks out. So mm. I think, you know, this year it's, it's a big year for them. Um, but I think, you know, Ballyshannon probably to me are the team to beat them intermediate this year. Yeah. Um, well, they have good forwards. They That's do. what impressed me about them. Yeah, uh, I know they concede it, but they can score a lot as well. Uh, they've, they've Paul Swinney back playing in the beginning. He hasn't played in a couple of years. Yeah. Playing in full forward, he's a bit of a handful. He played with Callum, uh, Callum Gallagher. Is this uh, a good week? Killian Gallagher. Killian Gallagher. Yeah. And of um, course, um, Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald's back. back uh, yeah, he was out last year with the Cruciate. He did the yeah. Cruciate, you know. But yeah. I think Paul Swinney's definitely a, a, a big plus for Clonley. He played against the Unions last week and he caused them serious problems mm-hmm. inside. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, so listen, you know they'll be definitely looking to get out of the group for starters, and um, you know move on from there. Yeah, John. Uh, you know, it's a big call, fancy to say that Bally Shannon team in Division Two. I know they were close to promotion, but they didn't. Mm. That that would beat uh, you know as you say, Charlie, a team that were comfortable enough in Division One. So. You know, but that, that intermediate championship is very competitive. Oh, yeah, it's and good teams, year, you know what yeah. I mean? Aye, very uh, good. George and Bally uh, Shannon c- collapsed in uh, it now. In fairness, Glenn Fun played very yeah. well, but Bally Shannon were very disappointing in the final last year. They were very disappointing, all right, but I thought Glenn Fun got the matchups right. And oh, yeah. I thought, you know, yeah. that they definitely got uh, they got that, that side of it right. Um, but I think uh, Bally Shannon are a different team this year. They're playing with the three men inside, three full forward, three big men, mm, you right. know, and they're kicking ball, early ball into them and they're getting the rewards, you know, and, but only for a result, you know, they would be they beat Kelly 
legs the week before. That's right. You know, and thought then, and then when we went through, then the last game, you know, yeah. they, you know, they were kicking themselves out there, yeah. you know. Another club kicking themselves as Burt, as Fancy alluded to earlier on, in terms of they had the League One and then suddenly they didn't even get promoted. They ran along with neighbours, Neve Column Kill. Uh, that'll be a tough one. And then you've got Neve Columba and Fanet Gales. That's a tough group. I, I like the look of Neve Columba, I have to say, up in Glen Finn. Mm-hmm. I know Glen Finn had a man sent off for the last 10 minutes, but they scored 1 4. The resolve that they showed and the determination was Noel Higgerty was taking <laughs> buck leps on the sideline, but it worked because he got a great reaction from them. Yeah, I've seen Neve Columba a couple of times. I've actually seen them on the Born Road one day against against Terminal. I've seen them a couple of other times this year. They're very like I said about Glen Finn earlier, they never know when they're beat. You know, they've that oil resolve, that doggedness that keep coming. A couple of young players coming up, Aaron Doherty, they you know, being the obvious one through and with the county senior team, Scotty Stantem, Fanic Yale, Shimmy Nanny done done the done the knee there a few weeks ago, big, big loss for them. You know, yeah. clubs they got and teams they got can't lose players of, of that calibre. Neve Colum Kill, it's been a tough year for them. You've had to play a lot of games away from home. Have got their act together in the last few weeks and look, they're capable of of rattling cages in that group, but it's a very, very tough, very tough group for them. Yeah. Burt have just fallen apart. Like they, they were coasting, almost, coasting. they're almost champions division yeah, three, and yeah. they haven't won a game since. And to turn that now, to turn that pendulum is back going to be a tough ask yeah, for them. Playing Neve Columb in the first game, and Francis, I suppose the other the comfort thing in the intermediate, you've got twelve teams starting, and it comes down to eight. So only four go out. You have three coming out of two groups and two out of the other. So there is a bit of a comfort zone there. Although, you know, if you lose one, you're under a wee bit of pressure then. But, you know, the good thing about that is, you know, you might be losing by three or four points, but you keep going because Clough and League had put out last year in scoring difference. That's right. You yeah. know, yeah. by one point. Yeah. You know, so listen, it gives the it gives the team maybe getting beat by three or four points, it, you know, dog it out and try and maybe get a score and bring it back and you can mm. get through in that. Um, just a, in that group there, you know, I fancy Glenn to top that group. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Noel Higgerty's on the, on, the, on the sideline with him, but mm. Aaron Doherty's been up with the county, it'll be a big addition to them and he's a, he's a, he's a great player too, you know. So you'd be thinking, uh, Burt, you know, with, with the way they went through now, I don't know how they're going to recover from that. It's a big, you know, big, it's a big, big, ass. Yeah. big ass big now ass. from that there, but they make, you know, they make it out of the group and there's you know, three teams going to get out of one group you know as well so yeah. you know they could get out of it yeah because three teams coming out of actually two groups I think France and then two out of the other to make yeah. a quarter final John you know if you play Midland you'll get out of the group and then the real action will start I suppose at the quarter final stage that's it Charlie you know it's, it's like everything Charlie's going to come down to who's got the squad and who can avoid injuries and suspensions you know because the games are going to come thick and fast now and you know it's getting to the time of year Charlie even out there today you know it's getting a bit colder and a bit wetter and you know it's the, 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 the summer football is kind of we're seeing the last of it now so over the next few weeks it's going to be a different kind of game and it's who can adapt it and who's got the players that can you know drag it out in them wet days and, and you know the cold days and maybe avoid suspensions and avoid injuries and keep the you know keep your best 15 on the pitch so you know Charlie it's a, an exciting time for club players yeah and- Fantastic. And just on the intermediate, you know, it's week on week now to the yeah. final. There's no right, rest. Right, there's no rest. So I was going to make that week, point yeah. to Chris actually yeah. straight through. Yeah. The finals on the 13th of October before yeah. the senior final. So yeah. that's tough going. Yeah. Staying, getting, keeping your important players or your better players fit is a key element to that, isn't it? Yeah, keeping it because you have no recovery time at all. No. You, no. you know, you're even at the slightest wee knock at all, and you're out for the following week. You know, and uh, something like that. You know, a man just even even tweaking a hamstring without even pulling it. You know, you're you're wanting to take a chance next week. You're looking. Maybe who do we play the following week? But yeah. I think on the intermediate two on on the Clochanelli point, they've consolidated themselves now in Division One. They've become now an established Division One club now that now this year. They need to be looking now playing the senior championship f- football. That has to be seen and as the need, next step. They need for Jason McGee fit as well, don't they? He'd yeah. make a big difference. And you would think, Jerry, with the quality of the intermediate and Denny Gall that you know, or whoever our champions are going to be, it would go on well in Ulster you know yeah. what I mean especially yeah. like a team like Clough and that is comfortable in, in a 10 team division 1 in Donegal you'd like to think that you know they've held their own they've they stayed on for a few seasons that they could yeah. push on and try one in Ulster yeah. intermediate yeah. you know be it them or Bally Shannon or whoever it's going yeah. to be Right, we don't have time to do a look at the juniors, but uh, we'll follow them as we go along just a couple of other things I want to mention the ladies final uh, Glenn Finn and Terman Francie, um I saw Terman earlier this year they looked they looked fantastic but they went up to Glenn Finn Glenn Finn beat them Glen Finn, you, a game like the men, you can't write them off. They've no. got a lot of talent there. That'll be a good final on Sunday. Ah, uh, definitely, yeah. And you know, pose in fairness, it's been nip and tuck between the two teams the last couple of years for for the title. And Glen Finn have won the last two, so Terman are coming now. Um, Sean the recent back in charge of them, and uh, they're putting a big effort. Um, 
posted like a beat in that game uh, last week and Glenfin needed to win that or the, the championship that's right yeah. so um, listen a good final um, but like I just think Terman if Geraldine's on song you know I think Terman will win it yeah Chris yes uh, one thing surprised me in the last week somebody was saying it's four years since Terman won the, mm. the senior ladies final I actually mm. I began to argue yeah, with, well, with well, the person I realised yeah, it was yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's hard to believe because they seem to have sort of mm. you, you think they've been there all the time but I think you know, with Yvonne obviously missing for um, Glenfin, if Geraldine is on fire, there's there's nothing to stop her. And mm. for me, it's you know that from one of you United. <laughs> you signed her up for the soccer, John. Yeah, took her away from the G. Seen yeah. that. Seen that. And uh, Sean Adeson won't be doing that. You want to follow with Sean Adeson? I don't worry. He's going to meet him from the right. I'll show you, John. Yeah. I won't be following yeah. with Sean Adeson. The, right the standard of ladies football. Uh, I know Maxie was disappointed with her All Ireland series. I was at those two matches actually against Tyrone and Mayo. We should have beaten Tyrone really in Mullingar that day. We got back at them and then give away a bad goal. And likewise against Mayo, uh, they were strong now in fairness to them, but Donegal didn't do themselves justice. But we've come a long way, John. Absolutely, Cherry, you know, a great. And, you know, I was expecting big things with Maxi this year. You know, I don't follow the ladies that, that well, well, to be honest with you, but you keep an eye on the results. And, yeah. you know, I thought they would push on this year. Because you see that, you know, it'd be great for them to get to Crow Park and that all there in final in yeah. front of 50,000 and for everyone, you know, it'd, it'd be mighty. And when you see they weren't far away from Mayo and Mayo were only picked by a point, probably should have bet Galway. Galway People were saying they got yeah. caught. You know, yeah. so yeah. Donegal aren't far away, but it's just trying to, I know they had Cork last year in the semi final, it wasn't easy. Mm. So, you know, making great strides here, because we're at the top table, but it's just. So the Ulster be, titles uh, in a row, you, you know. know wouldn't it be yeah. great to get to that big day in Crow Park oh, for them? For you sure. know, that, that, sure. that's the goal whether they want it or not but just yeah. to get to that big day would be fabulous for them and they're not far away and it's hopefully now that you know them girls stick together and, and they stick at it because you know small margins at that level but if they can stick at it hopefully you know that day not far away right. yeah. and they put in serious work as well Charlie you know mm. people sometimes you know we're all the time chatting about what, what the men's teams are doing God they put in while after in the training but you know Francie you know, those girls in tournament are doing serious work the Glenfinn girls we were out a couple of years ago interviewing a couple of Mountain Adam Spears Jim right. right there yeah. you know the sessions they're doing John it's phenomenal I know even just from the, the, the three girls the three tournament girls I have we train early on a Saturday morning half eight they come having done an early morning session before that with Terman. You have to acknowledge that for, for girls, for a squad of players to be going out of their bed that mm-hmm. early in the morning, week on, week in all well, as you know, they're they're, they're really are and I'm sure Glen Finn are, are no different. Yeah. Five o'clock in McCool Park on Sunday, so plenty of time for the Glen Finn supporters and the Terman supporters who play earlier that day, uh, against uh Glen Swally and Bondorn respectively, to get to that match. It should be a cracker. We can't go without mentioning the Donegal Masters who are in an All-Ireland final. We don't often get teams in. And the man of the match against Ross Common <laughs> allegedly, allegedly was John Harn. Oh, uh, no. He's very friendly with a lot of the media people. So <laughs> uh, I'm honest as well. The last time he got man of the match was the 2014 uh, Donegal senior final, I, I think, I, John. Funny you should say that, Jared, because Big Jared was ringing me and says, oh, congratulations. And I said, Jared was like 14. I said, the go- Ross Common goalkeeper kept kicking the ball out to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what Jared, that's what Big Jared did in 14. <laughs> but he kept kicking out to me, sure. <laughs> like an all star of me, but uh, no, Charlie, listen, it's, it's, no, as Charlie, you you were up at the down game earlier on the year, right, you know, yeah. it's a bit of crack, Charlie, listen, as I say, it's probably not the best over 40s team in Donegal, but it's the boys that go up and train and, and want to be there, listen, it's a bit of crack, it's not too serious, Charlie, but we're in the final now, and as I've said to you, if we could get Johnny McCafferty and Barry Monaghan and Shamie Kosha and them, Big Brian, so they've all joined up in Jared McGill's up from Carlow. Like, Took a while convincing them that they qualified, did you know, John? Aye. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'll get them, get, them, get them up there, you know, but uh, it's a bit of crack, Jerry, and listen, it was a great game against Roscommon, you know, yeah. uh, the second half was tit for tat, and point here and point there and we, we got over the line and then Benny Cassie came on and kicked a c- couple of good points ah Jerry's it's a good crack listen yeah. a bit of crack and the Dubs Tyrone obviously was a cracker 119 well, to 17 that's points that's it Terry, they're probably the two best teams and I like Tyrone were too good for us this year early on up in Kelly Clower but uh, we were missing a lot and it was early on and they were flying so uh, you know like we should have bet Dublin last year in the semi final. Yeah, the that's first right. day up that's in Cavan. Right. Yeah, yeah. And uh we missed our chance and they were too good for us and and, and, and the f- and the and the replay and then they went on to beat Tyrone. Not didn't beat Tyrone but too much in the final, but they're a big strong team, Charlie, a bit like the seniors, you know, big squad and they've a lot of players coming and you can roll on and roll yeah, off the yeah. subs and they've got good players coming on. You know, we have a big panel too, but you know, as you go down you go down the subs, maybe the quality mightn't just be there. Some of the boys might like the <laughs> But, you know, that's just, you know. So well, those can, are the facts. Those are the facts. Aye, so When's we, it on, John? It's, the, it's supposed to be Saturday the 21st of September. Probably up in Cavan again, where we played the Dubs yeah. last year. Yeah. I don't know if it'll be Breffney now, but 
couple of club pitches around Cavan and Turner are good there so listen Jerry, very good well listen congratulations right, great all Ireland final it doesn't matter uh-huh. what you're playing at to get to a final and the effort's going in so that's it uh, we've looked forward to the action in the Michael Murphy Sports and Leisure Championships uh, more in the senior and depth in the senior but as I said we'll be certainly keeping an eye on all the championships as we go along next week we'll be talking about what happened at the weekend and then we'll have, might have a slight idea as to how things are going to shape up but I'd like to thank my guests uh, John Harn, Francie Freed and uh, Chris McNulty for joining us here on this Donegal Sports Hub Donegal Daily preview of the championships we'll be back with you next week again but for now thanks for joining us